Well, 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 look at us getting a major upgrade. All right, so if you haven't heard the big four, Simplicity, McCall's, Butterick, Vogue, and also Nomi and New Look and Berta Style, which I guess they're the, really the big seven, I don't know, um, have combined all of the brands onto one website, simplicity.com. No more is something delightful, which was always really confusing anyways. Um, no more having to go back in between each of those sites to see the patterns you want. They're all here. Can you see? They're all here. And what's more is that they have released three collections, new McCall's, new Butterick, and new Nomi. Um, so over the next few videos, we're going to get all my first impressions of these three brands. Um, and then at the end of all of that, after I've had an opportunity to kind of poke around here a little bit, I'm going to do a kind of like tour of the website and tell you some things that I like. And if I find things I don't like, I'll let you know that as well. Um, so without further ado, let's start with McCall's because this is the order they put them in. So this is the order I'm going to do them. McCall's, then Butterick, then Nomi. So McCall's it is. Now this should be McCall's spring collection or is it early summer? I'm not sure. I get really confused with like the half seasons, but, um, okay. We're going to have to look at that another day. All right. Um, I, cause no, sometimes they'll say which collection it is, but, or maybe it's in the URL new sewing patterns. Nope. It doesn't say, okay. Either way, this is whatever season we're in, um, their new collection. So, it's kind of so weird to look at, right? Because we're so used to looking at the other one. Okay, I'm going to try and not get distracted, um, which will be hard for me. All right, first up, we're starting with a skirt, which is usually pretty rare. Normally, um, skirts are saved for like the end of the new patterns, but we got a skirt. This is a Mrs. Skirt in two lengths with a yoke and optional pockets. High-waisted, A-line skirts have seaming details and an exposed zipper at the center front. This is listed as an average rating, and the size charts are 4 to 12, and then 12 to 20. Um, it does look like there's a sew along for this. So there's a little QR code there. Um, and let's look at the pictures. So, high-waisted skirts. It's the natural waist. Then you have this yoke, and then this flowy part. These look like two different fabrics to me, like a denim and then some kind of like chambray cottony something or another um, patch pockets and this is the exposed front zipper from the zipper and down I think it's open I think that that's like a deep V all around the center front um, they put her in a heel and some basic jewelry and a tote bag I also I always like to look at that to see like get an idea of who they think is wearing this um, this definitely feels like a not really a mom, but not really a teenager, you know, somewhere in between. I know moms can be teenagers or teenagers can be moms, but you know what I mean in terms of like traditional marketing branding stuff. Um, we also have this purple one, which is just a longer version of this. Um, it still does have the waistband and the yoke, but then from there, it's just the, the stiffer of the fabrics and then a little short mini one. That's what all these are. Here's the back. The back looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a bubble here, which makes me think it might be long in the rise, or at least long for her, but barely. I mean, barely, barely. Other than that, um, yeah, the hem looks even. This looks even. It doesn't, like, yeah, it looks good from the back. Here's the envelope back. Cotton blends, denim, linen, and twill are the suggested fabrics, and then just interfaced or interfacing, which is interesting to me. Like you guys agree that this is a contrast fabric, right? It, but it's not listed as such. There's no way these two are the same. Or maybe if this is lined, no. 
Am I losing my mind? I don't think they're the same. Even if you'd interfaced all of this, even if all of this was lined, this and this down here where it's not gathered are not the same. They can't be the same. But it doesn't indicate that here at all. Um, so for the notions, a nine inch exposed metal zipper and then B and C have a 20 inch separating zipper. So A is the purple version. Yeah. So you just have a little zipper there and then these two get the longer 20 inch zipper. Um, it doesn't say metal. It just says separating because that's how you get into it. I guess technically it doesn't have to separate, but that certainly would make it easier. Um, but I think they all can be metal or they can all be plastic. I don't think you have to have metal for view A. It's just like the look they were going for. Um, okay, so these measurements, the bust is negligible, but the waist goes from a 22 to a 34, which translates to finished garment measurements of 23 and a half. So you get one and a half inches of ease at the waist. That makes sense to me. Um, so 23 and a half up to 36. And then your hip actually kind of does play a big role in this because it's kind of fitted at the hip. Um, there's five inches of ease at the hip for A and a little less than that for B. Um, probably just because you take the seam allowances out. I'm not entirely sure why there's less for B and C, but there is. Okay. Not for me, but cute enough, I guess. Oh boy. Okay. Um, next we have this little top, Mrs. Top. This is a top with sleeves or straps featuring a square neckline, gathering details, and back zipper. View A is a crop top. View D has shoulder pleats and a sash. Okay, so there's four tops here. Um, we have D, which is the shoulder pads and strapped version. This sleeve looks a lot like the one I just did for the sew along. At the very least, it has the pleats at the top. It might be missing the little pleating down here that was on the bicep of that pattern, but we've got princess seaming going into the wide straps. That's giving you your square neckline. Um, there looks to be a waist seam here and then a peplum. And then you can add this big bow if you'd like. You can Leave the peplum off altogether and get your crop top. Still long sleeves. This one actually has like a little band at the cuff, which this one is missing. Um, B, I think is this same sleeve, but is cut off around here somewhere. And again, it's finished with a little band. And you get the a shorter little peplum with no tie. And then C, I think, is this version, the same length. Um, no tie, no sleeves. So really a top for every season here is what you're getting. Um, so a lot of value there. Here are photos again in illustrations. Great little um, way to use up some um, like lightweight fabrics. Interesting, not at all what I was expecting. So the zipper is separating and it comes all the way down here under the tie. So if you don't have that tie, also an odd choice to pick a white zipper and leave it exposed. Super interesting. Are they mm, trying to make it easier to sew? I don't know. And then there does seem to be um, some excess fabric under the arm. You're getting some wrinkling here. But I don't think that that's really anything other than, yeah, it just might be because the sleeve head is so full. Like, I don't think that this looks, the arm side, the opening looks too high or low. I think there's just a lot of volume in the sleeve, maybe. But this is just not what I was expecting at all. If it were me, I'd be putting a zipper in the side seam. Like an invisible zipper, closes at the top and the bottom, and then 
and then close this up. You can still have this separated if you want, but this, I don't like that. That's not, doesn't, that looks homemade to me. It doesn't look um, very profesh. Brocades, cotton blends, poplin, taffeta. Yeah, but I also think you can go lighter weight than that too. I mean, there's no reason, especially like the ones with the sleeves for sure. Yeah. And the little peplum would be like really frilly. Yeah, I think you can go lighter weight than these for sure. Um, so they're calling for the 10 inch separating zipper, but I mean, you do you. Um, the bust on, oh, the sizing on this one goes from six to 24. So that is a bust of 30 and a half up to 46. Finished bust is 32 up to 48. Um, so two inches of ease in the bust. That makes sense for a close fitting garment. I'm disappointed that they didn't give us the waist measurement because the waist is so close fitting. Um, those of you that are apple shapes, you know, like you're not basing the size of this garment off of the bust. You're doing it off of the waist. And also those of you who are like, have a wide bust to waist, like difference, like your butt, like you're a D cup or bigger, for example, but you have a tiny waist. You kind of need to know your waist and your bust, you know, obviously you're going to be making full bust adjustments of some kind but even more of a reason why you would need the waist measurement. So I'm a little sad that they didn't add that. But listen, those of you that have been around for more than a year or so will know we didn't used to get this at all. So I'll take what I can get for now. But if we're looking for ways to improve, um, that would be my suggestion. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it is doing something weird where it's like confused between what it's showing me. Um, did you see how it had like new, uh, the know me there for a second? Um, and then it automatically switches on its own. I don't have to touch anything, but it is kind of trying to figure itself out still. Um, but this is the McCall's, a, a McCall's shirt dress. This is our next pattern. Oh, and they already have a sew along ready to go. I love that. Um, it's right here on the listing. You can watch it even before you buy it. That's great. Um, shirt dress in two lengths has a collar and a stand, a collar and collar stand. Okay. That's kind of difficult. They're giving us an average rating, um, puff sleeves that are lined and is finished with a narrow hem. A and B have gathers below the waist. Sizing options are four to 12 and then 14 to 22. I think that, me, um, sorry, Brittany in here, I think she's in the women's sizing. So I'm guessing this is one of the ones that has the women's sizing available. I wish, wish, wish they were clear about that. In the event that you are women's sizing, you see this, you're like, oh, I really like that. And oh, I kind of look like Brittany. That's what my size looks like. Am I this size? And you go through all of this only to realize that you're not. Only then to find out that they have a separate listing. So um, it would be nice just a little link here, maybe. All right, so taking a look at this, though, we have, again, our traditional shirt collar with the collar stand. Um, then you have a raglan sleeve into this little, like, puffy situation. It's cute. Um, and then this is lined also. I'm assuming how you're making this little puff is that the lining is shorter than the main fabric, and so the lining's kind of, like, pulling that fabric up underneath and creating that bubble layer. It looks complicated to do, but it's really, really easy. Then you have a button band. We also have some princess seaming coming down here and then a dropped waist. Okay. A dropped waist is not for everyone. Um, those of us that are pairs probably aren't going to love a drop waist on ourselves very much. Um, but if you are like a, what they call like a ruler, um, you're going to love them because they kind of give you a little bit of extra volume at your hips. Yeah. And then we have the midi length. All right. We have a knee length, same exact design. And then C has no waist seam at all. So this is for the every body, every shape. Um, so I mean, I, okay. So my thoughts are about that. Like that seems inclusive to me. You know, like normally I wouldn't even give this pattern a second look, but now maybe I am because I would make this version and I can make it shorter. Um, I could do things with the links if I wanted. So 
yeah, that's a great, great thing to add in. It probably wasn't that hard for them to redraft it. Whereas for me, that would have been a little bit too much for my brain to take in. So thank you for that. I'm a little bit disappointed. At first I was like, oh, but I only can, I would only sew one of these, but they're really only giving the other people who want the drop waist. They're only giving you guys two length options and I can manage changing the length of something. So I have just as many options as anybody else if I don't want the drop waist. So yeah, love that. Okay. Um, there's the, okay, here are the illustrations. Yes, we went over this. Here's the back. Interesting. Okay, so it's gathered at the upper center back. It creates a lot of volume at an area where you don't really need the volume. I think it would make more sense if there was like a yoke here and then gathers from here down. This is very interesting. I also think it would make more sense in the version that does not have this seam. I had assumed that this seam went all the way around the back, but it doesn't. It's just a back panel. I think in theory, this, do you see how it's creating this like um, little bit of a bend here? I think the idea is that this is supposed to drape over her bum. I don't think it's supposed to curve back in like this, but I think that this is not wide enough to accommodate this. Does that make sense? So if you made this panel wider, then this fold would ease itself into this area and you would have one, one think about like a, like a tent dress. It would flow from, the gathers would flow from the neckline straight down over her bum and there wouldn't be so much of a dip here. I wish we could see the non drop waist version to see um, how that's fitting, but you can see, I'll look, I'll show you guys the other um, line drawings when we get, why didn't we have those? Yeah, normally they, sometimes they're in the carousel, but if they're not, they're on the main part of the listing. Um, so they're calling for woven fabrics that are kind of like lightweight, but not super drapey. Um, cotton blends, gauze, gingham, and lightweight seersucker. All of that makes sense to me. I think you could also go up to a shirting, a lightweight shirting. You could do something a little bit more structured. Just remember, the more structured your fabric, the more stiff and like pronounced the sleeve bubble will be, as well as the gathers in the back. Um, so this is a 4 to 22 size range. That puts us in a, I mean, the bust is going to have tons of ease. Yeah, the bust has 6 inches of ease and the waist has 6 inches of ease. So very forgiving in the fit department. The hip is negligible because it's so wide. So for this, like I said, you're really basing your, the fitting is based off of the shoulder. Um, so you're going to get your closest bust and waist measurement and then work really hard on fitting the shoulder. And that's what's going to, prevent it from looking like sloppy and oversized. If the shoulder and the collar and the neck and all of that feels and looks proportionate to that portion of your body, then the rest of it, your eye kind of is a little bit more forgiving about, but she's got to be super comfortable to wear for sure. Um, there is some lining, I think for the sleeve, remember we talked about that and then interfacing for the collar and button band. Um, okay, so let's look at the line drawings, which are down here. Yeah. Okay, so if we look at the back of this one, this is acting like a fisheye dart. So it is pulling in at the waist, as is the side seam. So when you go to fit this and you go to drape this, if you have a bubble butt, like if your butt it sticks out, like away from your body, more so than wideness. Like you can have a large hip circumference, but the way that that is distributed can be like side to side or front to back, okay? Or both. Um, I'm a little bit of both. So I would wanna make extra careful that because there's these gathers here, I want this to float away from my body. That means I might have to add some width through here below the waist, right? Because we don't want to get rid of the shaping the waist is creating, but we do want to add a little bit like a, like a full seat adjustment, but like only through here would be my advice for the fitting this one. 
I think she's really cute though. And I'm excited to consider maybe making this one. Did you see how there was like a new look pattern there for a second? Okay. Just making sure I'm not losing my mind. Okay. We have some little kids swim. We're going to skip the kids because I don't know how to review that. I don't have kids. I, <laughs> I don't make clothes for kids, but here's a little set for the whole fam. All right. Now we have cargo pants and shorts. So this is a thing. It's a, it's a thing still. Um, it was a thing last fall and we're still seeing it. Um, the, the way that street style and athleisure have kind of, I will say evolved, but really it's kind of like a throwback. Um, but this is the latest and greatest. I also feel like, didn't we see something very similar to this recently? This isn't that same pattern and they just repurposed it, is it? I remember these panels. No? I can't, now I can't remember, but there's this described as a pull on elastic waist pant and shorts sits below the waist and have wide legs with or without cuffs. View B and C have cargo pockets. All views have back patch pockets. View C has a belt with a D ring closure. And again, um, so along. So, so these pants. Um, so there's a sew along here. Ready to go. Like it's ready to watch. Um, okay. So we have this really deep, um, uh, waistband elastic waistband you've seen this like the brand is it alo 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 um really kind of i think were the ones to introduce this and then everybody's been knocking it off since then i've seen it at target and walmart and everywhere else um usually like in a running short style but um yeah the really wide waistband is having a thing um this one has the d ring which i actually like that a lot with the waist um, i'm sorry with the belt loops um, we have the patch pockets, a zip away situation here to make cargo. Did, this doesn't look familiar to anybody else with the separate panel here. And then you have just the plain shorts. Here's the back. Yeah, everything looks really good. I'm curious to know, is this the cutoff for the shorts. Is that how short the shorts are? Um, also you could absolutely make these a capri length, just, you know, not putting this zipper in or whatever that is. All right. Um, crate, chalet and nylon ripstop are their fabric suggestions. Nylon ripstop is going to give you that athletic vibe. I'm, I get that. Crepe and chalet? That's not crepe or chalet. Or maybe that's the nylon ripstop. Oh, interesting. I don't know how I feel about crepe and chalet. Hmm. I would have chosen something a little less drapey. But it did look like in Mimi's thumbnail, I mean, that is a pretty drapey fabric. You can see how it is there. That almost looks like the... um crinkle rayon that they have at Joanne that almost looks like maybe like a um oh gosh that stuff that I made my uh, burn sign bibs out of um it wasn't rayon twill I don't know I guess if you think about no because they said crepe yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I might consider some other fabrics. Maybe like look in the stores and see what, I mean, cargo pants are made out of really like utilitarian kind of fabric. Uh, so yeah, that's that really throwing me for a loop, um, those suggestions. But um, uh, notions wise, you need a bunch of elastic, a bunch of elastic, a bunch of elastic, and then the D rings. So there's not actually a zipper here. It's just some kind of pleat. Um, and then this is alphanumeric sizing. So extra small to 2X, which is equivalent to a 4 to a 26 in the numerical size range. Um, and that gives us a waist, which is elastic. So that kind of doesn't really, I mean, it matters a little bit, but not as much as the hip does. So hip is 31 and a half to 50. And that is a 40 to 57 and a half inch finished hip, which is roughly eight and a half inches of ease in the hip. 
I'm trying to decide. Is it? Yeah, I guess they're, I don't know about eight. I'm seeing more like five, six. But if they say it's eight, then it must be eight. <laughs> I'll have to take their word for it. Um, okay, so a little bit of interfacing for this, for the belt maybe on C. And then, yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, I have to give it a second to like remember what we're doing here. All right, so now we have this Mrs. Robe belt, tie belt and nightgown by Laura Ashley. So they are repurposing this from 19 something or another, 1983 maybe. Long robe, has V neckline with tie, collar, self fabric ruffle, pockets, inside seams, buttoned front opening, self fabric tie belt and long sleeves with gathered caps that have cuffs with ruffles. Wow, that is just a long sentence. Um, long, high-waisted, gathered pullover nightgown has bodice with square neckline trimmed with purchased ruffling, armhole ruffles, and buttoned placket opening. Robe and nightgown have top-stitched hems. Authentic vintage reproduction includes additional size options and cutting layouts. So there have made some improvements to this, but... I mean, she's 1980s, 1980, if I've ever seen it. I was looking at this number thinking that that was the exact year, um, but they're not giving us that. They're giving us just 80s vintage. That's so sad. Is 80s really vintage? Like, like literally? <laughs> um, I mean, this is sweet. I don't know that I don't know about the rest of them. Um, it's just a lot. And I don't feel like the 80s is that old to where you couldn't just go to an estate sale and find this. Already done. Oh, here's the nightgown. I mean, why can't that be a regular dress? Wow, they got the vintage shoes and everything. Yeah, it's cute. It's sweet. It's very Laura Ashley, you know. That's just a lot. A lot happening, as made evident by those really, really long descriptive sentences. Um, cotton, cotton blends, cotton flannel, crepe de chine, eyelet, lightweight linen, seersucker, and wool. Yes, totally agree with all of those options. Um, three buttons, four buttons, and then purchased ruffling on the nightgown. I think that they mean like this, this little trim here, this little eyelet trim. Okay. Um, extra small to large. And this includes more sizes than the first version my goodness um that puts us at a i mean the finished measurements i mean the sizing in itself is pretty generous but um finished bust of 40 to 49 and a half we have what is that 11 10 and a half 11 inches of ease happening in the bust anyways so even if you're just outside of this i think you'd be fine i mean the hip has we have hip, bust, bust, width, width, robe, robe, finish, guard. what is this? Is this hip maybe? Robe, nightgown, hip measurements? And then, oh wait, waist. And then this is hip. They, they left off the bust and the, the body parts from these two. So I'm going to assume this is hip. That's a big assumption, but that's what I'm assuming. Um, if that's the case, then there's like 25 inches of ease in the hip. That feels like a lot, but what is this then? That's more than this. See, it's confusing. So we're not going to, we're not going to go too far down that rabbit hole. Okay. Next up we have, excellent, um, a Brandy Joan dress. So she was a new to McCall's designer last season remember she had the denim jumpsuit and also I felt like it was like a cottage core or some kind of cottage core dress so this is her third pattern with them 
close-fitting dress in short or long length has princess seams with a front tie keyhole detail, low open back, small flounce seat sleeves or straps and invisible zipper. And she has a sew along that's ready to go as well. Pretty. Okay. So, okay. This is, this is new and different and interesting, right? I, don't, I can't say that I've ever, ever in my lifetime, at least while I've been sewing, seen a neckline like this on a sewing pattern. Um, it probably feels very risky to those of you who don't have very large breasts, but for those of us that are like, you know, itty bitty titty committee, um, this feels very sweet and romantic, um, and also sexy at the same time. I kind of really love this. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of, on me personally, of this skirt. It's kind of like a trumpet kind of. It's not hard to fix and give yourself more of an A-line. Um, not, I, don't, I say fix. It's not, nothing's wrong with it, but it's not hard to adjust to give yourself an A-line is my point. Um, because you have all of these princess seams to work with. I mean, you could even just let these out by a quarter of an inch and you would feel so much more comfortable if you have any semblance of a belly. But like I carry some weight here specifically. So I just wouldn't want to highlight that. So I would want to make this be a little bit more floaty away from the body. Um, I also think she did a midi version here. I think a maxi would be equally as stunning. I think she's also got some kind of lightweight fabric happening. I can see it in a much um, more stable fabric and it being just as beautiful. So, but we'll look at those as we get through the photos. So options are, um, you have this little sleeve and it does look like there's a seam here and then a dart here or gathers here. We'll have to look at the line drawings for that. Obviously, all of this is lined. I'm assuming that carries down the skirt. I'd have to assume that. Um, on this one, I think it's a little bit more obvious. Yeah, that's lining, right? So maybe that's why she used such a lightweight kind of gauze type fabric. And it does look like, oh, that's as far in as I can go, but it does look like there's gathers here. Either gathers or three darts, and I'm assuming she's not going to kill us with three darts right there. But this is the sleeveless version. I think those are the only two versions that there are. The back is stunning. Oh, so pretty. Beautiful scoop back neckline. Um, I don't, I, I worry sometimes when the front is very open and the back is very open that these don't stay up on your shoulder. And you can't wear a bra with this one, so you can't wear bra carriers. So then do you just put in the tape or do you put in like those things that they have in the back of our socks that just like little grippers that keep it up on your shoulders? Maybe someone has experience with that. They can let us know. But you can see here more beautiful darting in the back um, and then a small little invisible zipper here. So, so pretty. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this would make a beautiful wedding dress. Um, maybe not for everybody, maybe more of a minimalist casual wedding, but I mean, I'm seeing it in white in that other version, and I just think it's so sexy and pretty, like, for sure, a wedding dress, at least to the rehearsal dinner or something. Okay, so the, I'm just check, make, checking to make sure the only differences are the little cap sleeve or without, oh, and the length, of course. Um, cotton blends, eyelet, and linen. Yeah, eyelet is a great option because it is fully lined. So your lining would act as the barrier between your body and the holes in the eyelet. Um, obviously lace would work, you know, as well. Um, and because you're doubling up, there's a lining and an outer fabric. You just have to be careful about the weight, um, cause it can get really heavyweight really quickly. Um, and that might not be appropriate for like a for this time of year. If you're going to make this for another time of year, then that's something all to, to consider differently altogether. Um, 
a little invisible zipper. We have 8 to 26 on the size range. Um, our bust, which I think is the most fitted part, is 31 and a half up to 48 with one and a half inches of ease. The hip is pretty fitted too, though. We have three or two and a half inches of ease at the hip. So yeah, the curvy girls are going to want to either, because I'm going to, I imagine I'm going to have to grade between more than two sizes. And I just would want that to look and make sense. So I'd probably be letting out the waist more. This is intriguing to me. This is a puzzle that I want to figure out, though. Like, I, like how to make this look good on my body. I mean, for what it's worth, she's kind of a pair herself. Little on top. And she's got kind of like a curvy hip situation happening. And it obviously looks great on her. I just would want to make sure it looks, I, that I'm comfortable in it, I guess, is the main thing. This feels already, like, exposing. And so if this also felt, like, exposed in a way that was, like, if this felt uncomfortable and this felt exposed, I would feel just all around uncomfortable. But I think if I could balance that out, I would feel better is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Cute though. Brandy really kind of like stepping things up for the McCall's brand, you know? All right. Here's her other dress. This is a knit dress. Um... Sleeveless knit dress has scoop or crew neckline with open back and band details. Dresses come in two lengths and has front seam that starts from the waist and then opens up into a slit. Okay, so it's your jersey column dress. We have the crew neck, which I actually prefer over the scoop neck. Um... I think, again, it's that juxtaposition of comfort. Like, I know this part is not exposed in the way where it's showing skin, but it definitely is, um, it's not necessarily even uncomfortable. It's just something that when I wear things that are very close fitted through my midsection, I feel I'm conscious of it. So if I'm conscious of that and also conscious of the neckline, then it's too much consciousness. And I'm just aware of what I'm wearing the whole time. Whereas if it, if I could get rid of one of those and only have this one thing to be conscious of, it's easier for me to forget about and just live my life. I hope that makes sense. Um, all right. So we have this seam here is what they say opens into this um, slit. And then we have a little hem. So it goes down to our mid calf or just below the knee. I love that she makes both versions. That It's just so helpful. And I get why they can't do that for every single pattern, but it really does help. So here's the open back with a band. So it's literally like a neckline finishing, like the same way you would do your neckline, just in the middle of your back. You could make this different shapes. Um, you could definitely make it longer on top. This, this I don't know, this feels a little bit like a, um, like a ship's, peephole <laughs> what's the you know the little thing on the ship where I, I know it has a technical term and a name and I can't think of it but that's what that reminds me of yeah not my fave I probably wouldn't go through the trouble and just leave it closed maybe yeah maybe if it were a different shape or if it were oh yeah even I think like a slit action think about like a cat eye but long ways would be cool. I mean, you can definitely cut this up and hack it in a million different ways, but this just feels like a, is it called a porthole? Is that it? Um, that's what that's looking like to me. Oh, it was supposed to be more oval. Okay. And the line drawings is definitely more oval. I guess that makes more sense. Okay. 50% stretch knits. Um, so wow. Yeah. So that's like a cotton blend. Um, interlock jersey, stretch velvet. She had a rib knit on. Um, I'm assuming she sized down for that. The gray one was a rib knit. Um, but close fitting throughout. Um, there's actually some ease in every area. Um, it says five inches in the waist. I don't know about that. 
I would go one, one inch of ease in the waist. Um, yeah, I'm not buying five inches of ease in the waist for sure. Um, and then two ish in the hip. That's even a lot. I would take all of these down to one, one or two. That's what I would do, especially with something with 50% stretch. If it, if your fabric has a hundred percent stretch, I'm taking it down to zero or even negative one. Um, just to get it to look like it's supposed to, it shouldn't be standing away from your body. Okay. So this is the one that Mimi has the, or not Mimi, um, Brittany has the sew along for, right? Yes. Okay, good. So this is the women's version of the dress with the drop waist. I mean, look how good she looks in the drop waist. Maybe I need to reconsider the drop waist, but then again, she's hourglass. So that's probably what the difference is. You know what? I'm sure it would look fine. You know, and I just over, you know how we all always kind of overthink how things look on our bodies, but there is still this option always. There will always be this option. So that's good. Um, they did not make this version for her, which I half expected them to, since this is the one that's like the most different. Um, like if you're going to make a Mrs. version and a women's version, make the two that are least like each other, but they didn't. They just made the shorter version of the Mrs. version. Okay, 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 perfect. So do you see the difference in the other back versus this back? I hope so, because that's what I spent all that time trying to explain. So these gathers look a lot better, a lot less chaotic and crazy because it floats over the apex of her bum. All right, we're not getting that weird like shelf, you know, bubbly thing. So I hope you can go back and forth and see these two things next to each other. Maybe open them in tabs, two tabs and go back and forth and you can see the difference and why it's so important to let this part of the back panel out um, so that you can get that really pretty smooth back. Excellent. Love that. All right. Cotton blends, gauze, gingham. I think all of this is going to be the same. The, the, E should also be the same. It's just different sizing. So this one finished, um, again, it's pretty roomy throughout, but the finish in the bust is 46 to 64. Okay. All right. Now this is the Mrs. Top. And we do have a women's version of it. it. comes up right after this one. So fit and flare tops have scoop neckline, bust darts, gathered puff sleeves, Juliet sleeves, and long sleeves. And then separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. Which is great, but this looks a lot like the very first pattern we looked at. I mean, I don't know why you would buy the first one if this one's available. I, I get the first one is like a true waist. And this is, you know, empire waist and floats away from there. Also, when they were doing tops like this in the 2010s when I started sewing, um, almost always these were ended up being long enough to where you could just literally buy a quarter, half an inch of, I think half an inch is eight, half an inch, half a yard is 18 inches. You could buy a quarter of an inch, a quarter of a yard, which would be nine-ish inches depending on how tall you are and where your height like if you're long waisted or long legged and make this a dress that's my whole point you don't have to buy that much more fabric to make these into dresses and as somebody who likes dresses I was always like that makes more sense to me to have a whole outfit the same amount of work with a little bit more money that's all I'm trying to say um I do like this a lot I love this is the Juliet sleeve right and that what that's called I love this sleeve um, I like the scoop neckline. I like an empire waist. There's bust darts here, side zipper it looks like. Um, but this one is equally as cute too. And if you have a lot of those like cottony type fabrics that just kind of live in the mid-weight section of your stash where they're not super lightweight, 
but they're also not like, you know, fall and winter cottons either. Um, these would be great. This one I think you could make out of a ponty knit and it would be really lovely. Um, the first one I was seeing out of like a lightweight drapey fabric, like a chalet or a crepe or rayoni something or another. This one feels like kind of like a quilter's cotton, if I'm being honest. Um, some kind of like shirting would be really great. And then because they moved the zipper to the back, you have, or to the side, you have this really smooth, pretty back and you can really see how this, the, it's like a circle skirt, how this peplum is done. Love the sleeves. The sleeves look really, really good. Remember the other ones had like so much wrinkling underneath. These look really, really good. I think there might be some darting here too. Yeah, I would love to see this as a dress. A little like a baby doll dress. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with a baby doll dress, uh, in my opinion. Um, brocades, that's an interesting choice for spring and summer. Cotton blends, poplin, taffeta. Huh. Okay. A norm. A, a, okay. So those work, right? But normally, when they release the patterns, they're only releasing them for the season. So the requirement, the fabric suggestions are usually like appropriate for that season. I don't know where I'm wearing a brocade top to in the spring and summer. Even my fanciest event, even like a wedding, I don't know that I would wear that. Hmm, interesting. But they would be beautiful in all of these fabrics and then all the other ones I mentioned as well. Um, okay, so all you need is the invisible zipper and then some elastic if you do this little elastic waist. Or what am I saying? Elastic, like, sleeve. Uh, body measurements. The bust is the most fitted part, and in the bust, it looks like, oh, and we have the different side, the different bust cups, too. So in the AB cup, we're just going to, that's what it's usually based off of, um, it looks like there's two inches, 29, 30, no, three inches of ease in the bust. So it's still pretty roomy. Um, it's not a fitted garment. It's semi-fitted. Um, and then, yeah, you can make it for your different bust cups, too. I like this one. I like this one a lot. Um, we'll definitely have to shop the stash for that. And also any of these that don't have sew alongs that you would be like, I would make that, but I'm afraid to, cause I don't know how, um, chime in in the comments and let me know because I'm looking for my, um, summer sew along pattern as we speak. And I might even be able to do a couple of them because the summertime gets a little bit slow with my classes and other things that I have going on. So yeah, don't hold back. Let me know if they already have a sew along, like if Brittany did it or Brandy did it, like, I'm not going to do that. They, they're the same. Okay. They can teach you just as well as I can. Um, but if it doesn't have one, let me know, especially I like this one as an option because there is the misses and the women's. Okay. So they made the same version. That's disappointing. Okay. I want you guys to make one of the other versions. If you have a misses and a women's. I don't need to see the same version in two sizes, right? Did y'all agree with me on that? Yeah, that is, that is a full on circle skirt. So pretty in the back. I just love how smooth it is with the zipper on the side. Okay. All right. There's the women's version. Oh, and then I didn't even think about this, but different cup sizes for women's. So it goes up to double D. I kind of wish, I know you guys are thinking it to your, I know you're thinking it, so I'm going to say it. If the Mrs. version has A, B, C, and D, and women's has C, D, and double D, shouldn't they have a third one too? Now, let me make sure before I go off on a little tangent here that I'm speaking accurately, but this version has three bus cup options. Yep, A, B, C, and D. So then the women's version has C, D, and then double D. They should have a third one too. They just should. It should be equal. Okay. I'm trying really hard not to look at those other patterns that keep popping up, but they, some of them are, are catching my attention if I'm being honest. 
Okay, 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 thank you, finally. Okay, so they, sometimes they're using their, their brains over there and thinking about us as the consumer. Um, this is the very first pattern we looked at in the women's version in, made up, the sample made up in a different version. So now we get to see what version B looks like on a human being and what version C looks like on a human being. Thank you. This is adorable on her. This is so, so, so cute. Um, I love the mini, but with a full zipper. All of these details, the top stitching, it's all so, so, so cute. And I have to imagine that this doesn't even take that much fabric. That's view B, right? View B. View B, view B, view B. Yeah, one and a half yards of fabric for the smallest version and one and five eighths for the largest version. Oh, I know I have some scraps of like leftover denims or twills or whatever that I could make view B out of. And I've been really liking skirts lately. Her, remember the other girls had a little bit of a bubble here too? There's definitely something happening with the yoke. I would just check the the height of it all just to make sure that all of this is equal to waist minus hip distance. Doesn't that look so good on her? Oh, I love it. And is what is this? Oh, that's the top of the zipper. So there's no hook and eye. There's no nothing. You just literally zip it up. There's no button. Oh, freaking adorable. And those sometimes, you know, you just get in the mood for doing all that top stitching. They are still sticking by their guns that these are the same fabrics. I don't know how that's possible after looking at the first one. All right. So no sew along on this one either. So that might be a good option. We haven't done a skirt like ever. Um, I think we've only ever done dresses and tops. All right. So we have that, that, that. Oh, where were we here? Okay. So now we have, oh, we're getting to the end, I think. Um, when I start when I start to see men, I know that we're, we're getting to the end. Um, this is a sleepwear set. Okay, this is cute. Easy to sew sleepwear pattern for misses include robe, dress, top, shorts, and pants. Loose fitting robe has three quarter sleeves and belt. Pullover top and dress have square neckline and wide straps. Shorts and pants have elasticized waist. You C, D, and E have folded ruffle, meaning it's like one piece of fabric. You fold it in half and then gather up the raw edge. Views A and B have purchased fringe trim. That's fun. Um, that's that's a choice, right, on the fringe. <laughs> they really went like Gilded Age with that. It kind of is giving like, I just stole these from my curtain tie backs, but whatever. Um, like they could have done white and it would have been fine, but I guess they were trying to call out that color, whatever. Um, so yeah, simple robe design, right? Then we have the top. Now the top is a basic bodice with just a little side dart here, wide straps. And then this is the folded ruffle. There's the shorts, elastic shorts, pull on ruffle, and then same with the pants, just the pants, are they flare? Um, let's see at the line drawings, we'll be able to tell. There's the back of the dress. So I think the dress is the exact same as the top, it's just longer. I think that has that same bust dart, um, just longer with the, okay, so the pants are straight leg. So it's this extended to make it longer. This is extended from this and then the robe. So you really only get three patterns and then two of them have like that you know cut here for view a or whatever it is so you i mean if you've been sewing for a minute you probably have something similar at least to the dress and shirt and shorts and pants maybe you don't have a robe though but this reminds me of the um willow tank it just has separate straps uh, charmeuse, fancy, crepe back satin, ooh la la, crepe and stable knits. Yes, I think you can also do cottons, especially if you're like a lighter weight 
drapier cotton. You could do linen. That would be lovely. Lighter weight, though. You want it to, you know, be breathable and, and move and kind of fall into your body a little bit. Okay, 8 to 26 on the size range. None of this is close fitting. Um, they're not even giving us finished garment measurements because it really doesn't matter that much. So you're going to pick based off of, um, I would pick based off of my bust and then I would be able to figure out the rest. Okay. Now I'll find the man again. Here he is. So again, I don't do a lot of reviews on menswear just because I don't really know what I'm talking about, especially when it comes to like fit and stuff. Um, I can just tell this is something Dan would wear or this is something Dan would not wear. Um, I don't, I don't know that Dan would wear anything with an, an all elastic waist. Do we see that for men like ever? Also, what is this? Like what is happening? Why is there like a pleat there? Um, I will say that the length and the opening that all that feels very trendy and like what guys are wearing. Um, but I would wear this as a woman. Right? Yeah. You guys, I, I, all right. So Dan never goes shopping. And if he does, he's replacing like t-shirts. Like bottoms, he's always wearing something with like, well, this has a fly and also elastic. Are, are y'all seeing that when you're going out shopping with your men? The jacket's really cool. I would especially like that jacket if it were like a foot shorter. Do they have something drawn in the crotch there? No. Yeah. Are, are guys really digging full elastic? I'd be very curious to know. All of this I can't speak on. I don't know anything about ease and guys clothes. I know none of that. Um, but chino, cotton, denim, twill, all that makes sense to me. So. Yeah, nothing's supposed to be happening there. So I don't know what they thought. I think somebody went in and kind of tried to tuck that. There must be like excess fabric there. Y'all see that, right? I'm not losing my mind. Um, and tried to like tuck that out of the way or something that is not the seam line okay we got to get away from this or else <laughs> something's gonna happen to all of our google searches oh gosh okay um he okay wait what is this pdf version oh a separate listing for the pdf and i was always curious to know how the pricing is going to go on those they're charging the same How? Why? How is it the same? Okay, that's a conversation for another day. This is girls' shorts and cargo pants, but it's a learn to sew pattern. Okay, normally I wouldn't get so excited about that, but I do have tweens and teens taking sewing lessons from me, and they're always like, where do I get sewing patterns? And I always send them to Indy because there's, you know, like McCall's has patterns for kids, but it's assuming that you know a lot, like you're the mom or dad sewing for them. Um, you're the adult aunt, grandmother, whatever, um, sewing for them. So that's exciting. I might send this to some of the moms and then, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Okay. So then we have this vintage and I always give this prerequisite. I've been doing a lot better lately, but um, when it comes to vintage, uh oh, okay. When it comes to vintage, sometimes I don't know all the terminology. And so they'll say that there's a detail and I don't have any idea what they're talking about. So bear with me, but I've been, like I said, been doing better lately, or they've been making the descriptions easier to understand for those of us who didn't sew back in the day. Um, but this is a beautiful 1940s era sports dress pattern one shoulder design with bow tie at shoulder and waist full skirt finishes just below the knee authentic vintage reproduction includes additional size options and cutting layouts okay so 1940s one shoulder dress is really what we're looking at here ties into a bow at your shoulder cool 
I wonder if it has a waist seam or if that's all done with the belt. I do like that they featured it with a um, stripe. Yeah, I'm guessing the belt is attached. Cotton blends, gingham, linen, shantung, 6 to 24. The waist is the only finished garment measurement, and it's 2 inches of ease. So, yeah, somehow that is finished. Did they say even how we get into it? Oh, I think that's the zipper there. And theirs are tied into bows on the side, but this line drawing doesn't show bows. Normally it would look like this. Or if the belt was separate, it would be a separate belt. So I don't quite know what's happening with the belt thing, but I also don't do one shoulder designs. I just don't like them on not just me. <laughs> I'm just not a fan. I don't get it. I don't get, oh, a little vintage knit situation. We don't see that very often. And I think it's because back in the day, they didn't really have knits that you could buy at home, correct? Nine, uh, vintage 1970s wrap dress has short sleeves with darts, front tie drawn through opening and right side seam. So like a true wrap dress. This is Diane von Furstenberg. This is what she made her millions based off of from this time. This is probably why this dress pattern was made. Um, it also has a back skirt with waistband and tie, cross in back and tie in front. Okay. So, yeah, this is a DVF knockoff. Um, I think mostly she makes her dresses out of, um, out of ITY. The DVF was throwing me off with the ITY. I kept wanting to say IBF. <laughs> um, um, so ITY knit um, is mostly what she's using. But yeah, because it's like a wrap and because it's a true wrap, you can really like cinch it in. You can let it looser. Um, and this midi length was really popular. Also, she would have longer sleeves too, but... besties okay so that's a really complicated looking uh line drawing um stretch knits and cotton knits jerseys velvet knits it doesn't get the stretch percentage on here i liked that the other one did can we keep that up and then finished garment measurements are only giving us the length on this probably because it is so stretchy maybe i don't know why but this line drawing has me intrigued like, I can't even tell. Is that the right side or the wrong side? That's the inside, right? And doesn't the... The top doesn't cross over too? Front tie drawn through opening and side seam. Now I'm confused. Yeah, this goes up to the front. I think I, think I know what I'm talking about, but maybe I don't. Either way, wrap dresses are beautiful on every single body, every single figure. And you can get ITY knit for not a lot of money. Um, okay, there's our little munchkin. So cute. All right, we've got some costumes. We're going to skip over those. I don't know. I don't even know where to begin with costumes. That's like a whole other realm of sewing that I just, it's foreign to me. Let me know what you guys think of the new collection. I feel like it's been forever since we have one to look at. Um... I do think that this little mini skirt is worth taking a look at. The shirt dress for sure. Um, this one, I'm, I might just have to. I mean, I can see myself wearing that to several occasions throughout the year. Um, what else? This one into a dress. Um, and wasn't there one more? Or is that it? Oh, the DBF? Yeah, maybe. Um, those are my standouts from this collection, but I'd love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment. It's my favorite part. I read all of them. Trust me. Um, and yeah, we'll have a good time chatting about it. Also, come back soon because I'll have the others um, popping up as soon as they're ready.